Welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner. This is another video tutorial of Photoshop Elements. I'm your host Jack. First, let me say thanks to everybody out there that's picked up a copy of the DVD. And thanks for the positive feedback. That feedback definitely makes it worthwhile. Um, just to hear how many people is actually learning more and more with those DVDs. And having them out there and, you know, it's a really great way to... Uh, you know, be able to learn Photoshop. High resolution videos, very easy to follow. Um, each one's anywhere from 10 to 15 minute segments, so it, it's great. You can pause it and rewind it. And $15, it's a, it's a great way to to actually um, learn Photoshop elements. Also, check out my uh, sponsor, GreenScreenWizard.com. I do ask if you're going to purchase the Green Screen Wizard software, please visit my website, Jacks techcorner.com there's a link on the YouTube videos over on the right under the more uh, you just click there take care of my website and if you're going to buy green screen wizard just click on the little graphics on my web page and purchase it that way I did uh, sign up to become a partner with him so uh, with Ken so it's a, it's a great way to uh, help the show out and at the same time you're helping Ken out our sponsor okay so I have an email that I received and this is what uh, spiked this tutorial. Now, folks, the thing with the emails is, and this is from uh, Kira, and Kira's asking that she's been watching the t tutorials for a while. Uh, they're great. She's learning. Uh, I appreciate that. Thank you for the uh, the compliments and, and the comments. I, I do uh, definitely appreciate that. You just purchased Photoshop Elements 7, and you want to be able to take two or more pictures and combine parts of them. And, and you're having a big frustration. That's why as soon as I got this email, and you can see I actually I received this, I think, today. Um, well, the 21st is when I received it. And since you're having so much frustration, I figured, you know, here's a great tutorial for a video. It's kind of like building collages, and it's kind of not. Because a collage is kind of you're taking a bunch of pictures and kind of grouping them all together. And I think I showed one time how to take individual pieces of pictures but we're going to do it this time. We're going to call it Grouping Pictures. That's going to be the title of this uh, video tutorial. And I'll show you how that's done. And also, a lot of people do get irritated when they're trying to jump back and forth between pictures because they don't know exactly how to get them up in the editor, how to work with them, and then close them out of the editor and still be able to use the picture. It does. It is a frustrating uh, thing to do, but once you catch on to it, it, it's quick and it's very, very easy. So Kara, thank you for the question, and let's go ahead and get started with the uh, video tutorial. Here I have some pictures. I think I used these before in a couple of the videos, but uh, this is a, a local museum we visited. And we're going to take some of these pictures, and we're going to combine them, or parts of them. And we're going to combine those parts to make one picture. You can do this a lot of different ways. I like to ordinarily start with a picture to use as my background or as my base. I like to call that the base picture. So we're going to use this um, lion or tiger or whatever it's supposed to be here coming down out of the ceiling and uh, because there's just not a whole lot around it that I can start dropping pictures around there or parts of pictures and, and tell a story by looking at one picture. That's what we're trying to accomplish here. So I have the first one selected. We're in the organizer and I'm going to scroll through here and find a couple others that tell a story of what we were doing and who was there. Went back up here. We're going to pick out a picture of a, this dinosaur. Hold your control key down and select the dinosaur. Scroll down through here. And let's see, we'll find some others here that we're going to actually use. Here's one you know, the family in the igloo, the family sitting on the igloo kind of tells who was there. The kids being a little crazy. Yeah, we'll grab that one. And well, that should be enough. I'm going to grab this one too just in case. Once I get everything selected that I want to use, I just simply right click and I go to full edit. Now this is going to open up all these pictures together at one time in the editor. This is where it starts to become confusing because how do we select each individual picture because they're stacked on top of each other, right? Or they're cascaded on top of each other. 
and it's very hard to get in there. You can see right here, you can see off to the side uh, what the name of the picture is, but how many of us actually know the names of all these pictures that our camera takes and we put into Photoshop, right? We don't really know the names. But down here at the bottom, there's this little area called the bin. The bin keeps everything in here that is open in the editor or everything in here that you're currently working on. Let's put it that way. Now, the way I like to start these is I start minimizing these until I get to my base picture. Minimize, 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 minimize. This is the base picture. I'll just pull it down and I'll just minimize the one behind it here because it's just this one. And if you've seen, I clicked on the top of it to bring it up. If I click on the top of that one, it'll bring it up. That's how it works. Minimize that. Here's the picture we're going to start working with. And you can do all your edits from the other videos, you know, lighten it, brighten it, do whatever. We're not concentrating on that. We're concentrating on how do we get these pictures or parts of these pictures in here. Now, let's go to View, Fit the Screen. And now, to bring up this first picture, all we do is right click on it with your right mouse button and go to Restore. Okay, let's do that again. It's not in the editor right now. Let's right click on it and go to Restore. If you leave all these pictures open in your editor, it gets very, uh, it becomes a very hard task to jump back and forth between all these pictures. I find it easier to do one at a time. Now, here's the picture I'm going to work with. I want this dinosaur. I don't want all the background. Right? The background is not really the big thing. The dinosaur is. Now you can sit and you can use your quick selection tool and just select this dinosaur and in these bones, it's going to be a little difficult. And we're not going to do it that way. We're just taking pieces of the picture or pictures of the pieces. That wasn't going to work. Pieces of the picture. So I'm going to go here to my uh, rectangular, rectangular marquee tool and we're going to make a selection around the dinosaur. I just use my left mouse button, click and drag. And that cuts out the majority of that background. So, you know, that's just a quick and dirty way to take a piece of the picture out. And I'm going to show you another way with a few of these other ones to kind of dress up your, your mass or uh, group picture or whatever you want to call this. Now you go up to edit, click on that, and click on copy. Once you have that information copied to the internal, what they call the clipboard on the computer, we can minimize this one again. Now we're back on this one. All we have to do is do edit and paste. Here's our picture. Look what it automatically did. It automatically built a new layer on top of the background layer. So each one of these drag you drag in here, you can create a layer. That's important because if we make a mistake when we're resizing or moving these around, or if we don't like the picture that we chose to put on the background, we can just delete the layer and we won't be ruining the whole thing that we're building. Now if we go up here and click on the move tool, you can see that the little handles came on here that we can actually resize this picture. And when you go to resize the picture and you start pulling, make sure this is on here. See where it says constrain proportions? You want that because if not, you're going to make this guy, you know, real short or whatever. It's not going to be right. All we're doing is changing the aspect of the dimension of the picture, the size. So we're going to make it, you know, about that big. And we'll start up here. You can leave it like that. Or if you put your mouse under here, under that little turn thing here, see where your mouse actually turns to a bunch of handles around or underneath? You can spin that thing clear around just by moving your mouse around it and holding on the left click button. I like to give them a little tilt, you know, just something like this. And click the uh, little checkbox, and that kind of locks it in there. All right. You can see now i got a picture on top of the picture. Next thing I like to do is drop the opacity down a little bit just to kind of blend it a little bit. Just to give it a little bit of blending. Not enough where the background's coming through, but just enough where it's blended in a little bit. Okay, there's picture number one. Click back on your background. Let's go back down here. Again, you're going to right click, go to restore. Now these guys in this picture, maybe you want to make this a little different looking. We can do that. We can select our cookie cutter tool. Remember folks, this is live. So I record these live. If we click this little menu over here on the right, 
you have a bunch of different ones you can work with. I've showed you this in the past if you've been watching all the videos. Let's do a frame. And we'll grab a frame out of here. And let's see how this works. Once again, it's live. So we're just going to frame them. All right. And that, you see, that didn't work the way we wanted it, did it? Let's duplicate the background first, see if we can frame them. Nope, that one's still not going to work. So that's one thing, it's live. So see, I made a layer on there, so that's okay. We're not going to hurt anything. Let's not do the frames. Let's go down here and go to crop shapes. Let's do it that way. We'll look at the frames another time. So we have a crop shape here. We're just going to go right around them. And what happens there is, you turn this layer off. You can see we actually cropped them out and put a little frame around them. Now once you have that, all you have to do is go to select all, because this is transparent, you're not going to see it anyway. Edit, copy, minimize this, edit, paste. Now we have that frame picture on there. Okay, and you can't see the outside of it because it's transparent. You can see here it made another layer. Go to your move tool again, resize. We'll just make this whatever size we want to make it. We're going to lower it down a little bit smaller. Turn it. Pull it down. Click OK. Once again, if you want to, drop your opacity down just a little bit. And now you have two pictures on. You combine two pictures. So if you get this developed as an 8x10, then you're going to have this in your frame at home. You're going to have the you know the tiger, lion, or whatever this is supposed to be up here, uh, mountain cat maybe, with these uh, dinosaur, uh, with the folks sitting by the igloo. So let's go ahead and move on. Go here. We're going to restore this one. And you know you can use multiple shapes. You don't have to use the same shapes every time. Use something different. This is just very much your own thing. Let's see here. We're going to do another crop shape. I kind of like the crop stuff. Works out pretty nice. Uh, we'll go with this one, the circle one. Let's come right around them with the igloo. Click OK. There we go. Now we have a different shape, right? Got a little depth to that one. So that looks pretty neat. Select all. Once again, edit. Copy. Minimize it, get this out of your way. Edit, paste. Now you see that one's on there. Click on the move tool again so we can resize it. Maybe this one if you want to make it look like an interesting picture. You don't want to get that too small there because see it's I was gonna have it underneath his paw there, but I don't think that's gonna work. Maybe we'll have it right here. You can have different size ones. They don't all have to be the same size. This is definitely a personal thing. All right, I'm going to lower the opacity on that one just a little bit. And there we go. Now we have that one. So you're joining these pictures together. Uh, and as you can see, it's very, very easy. Restore this one. This one here, maybe you want to sh cut this out, but you know, you don't want a whole lot of background detail. So on this one, Let's do more of a diagonal thing on it. Let's see what we got here. Maybe something like that. We can just come right across here. So you still see the boat, but you don't want it too big because I already got an idea where we want to place that. Select all. Edit copy. Minimize. Right? Minimize it. Don't close it. Just minimize it. Edit and paste. All right, the move tool, and there we go with that one. And you can also stack these things. Here's a stack. I'll show you a stacking. See if I can make this look right. If you want to do something like that. Now you can see where this one, 
up here, let's see which one that is, is on top of this one here. All right, so they're right on top of each other. We can do this one. We're going to lower the opacity once again. Just like so. Click on this. There you go. So as you can see there, we took multiple pictures and we grouped them with the underlying picture. Like I said, we're going to call this grouping pictures. Seems like a good title for me to use on this. And I think it's going to work out very well for you. Just take your time. Remember, first thing to do, like I said, is minimize everything down to the bin, except your base picture. And then just start right-clicking on them and restoring them. And bring them up in here. Cut out what you want. Remember to do a edit copy. Right? The first thing to do is edit select all if you're going to do some transparent backgrounds like these ones are now. Alright. And also remember, folks, this is important. When you close these ones, watch what it's going to do. Do you want to save the changes to this? If you save the changes, this is forever cropped. Tell it no. You're not saving the changes on this one. The one we're building is this base picture. So always remember that. What I would suggest to do, once you get everything done, click on File, Save As, and then we'll call this Grouping Pictures. We're going to save it as a JPEG, right? We'll save it as a JPEG file and then save it out. If you want to save it in the version set, you can. You don't have to. Um, I think I'll leave it in the version set. Largest file size, because I'm planning on, you know, I'll probably get this developed, get this printed off here as an 8x10. And uh, then I'll be able to actually uh, hang that on the wall, frame that, you know, hang it on the wall. It's an interesting picture, tells a story, and it's also, you could also use this for scrapbooking. A lot of people email me and talk to me about scrapbooking. It's another great way to do scrapbooking, but we'll look at a little bit more here uh, a little bit later on about scrapbooking. And I also want to show you how to actually build those cool little photo books that you see everybody have, you know, uh, laying on a coffee table. Well, folks, please stop over to jackstechcorner.com and check that site out. Um, you know, I'm getting ready to actually open up more of a um, an online store type deal. There's going to be some different DVDs coming out. There's going to be some different DVD choices in there. So I want you to check back there often. Uh, join the web form. There's a form on there. You can click on and join. And also the survey. If you get a chance, take that survey. I know I asked the last time. I had over 240 some people watch the videos that I put out. And I got like 21 people filled out the survey. So it, give me uh, five or nine seconds of your life and click those. But I know nobody likes them. I don't ask for your email address or anything. Just basic questions about the show, about what you think. Um, I'm going to try to make some changes here on what you think I should change and what you think I don't need to change. So until next time, keep those shutters clicking, keep the editors editing. I'm Jack, and I'll see you back here very soon. Bye for now.